Hey everyone, this is Badger of Badger Goodger on YouTube, and today we're going to talk about 5 annoying bugs in GTA San Andreas that can ruin your gameplay experience and completely break your save games. What do we love this game for? For its endless opportunities and features, of course. Here we can unleash our wackiest dreams and do something that we definitely won't even try in real life. And why do we do these things? To relax after a long and exhausting day, of course, and we should be thanking the developers for this great opportunity. In order to make every single game mechanic fun and stable, the developers had to polish and improve their code day and night. But the truth is, players will still find ways to break their game and this is usually caused by doing something that the developers didn't experience during playtests. These bugs can be divided into two categories. It's either something irrelevant that basically does no harm, or it's something serious that can affect a player's walkthrough and ruin their save game. And this is something I want to show you in this video. I think we can all agree that players love to cheat in this game. It's really no surprise because there are tons of funny codes that you can mess around with for hours. But do not forget that the developers do not recommend us to save the game with cheats activated, because, as they mention in the warning, it can affect our save game. Of course, most of the time, the players tend to ignore this message and confirm the save of their progress without even thinking that there's a risk of breaking their save. But the thing is, there's this Peds Attack Each Other cheat which activates a pedestrian riot or mayhem. And everything would be okay with this cheat if only the developers properly coded the deactivation for it. You see, if you type this cheat again, you'll notice that the mayhem going on in the city has stopped, and everything seems to be calm again. However, due to a flaw in the code, six ped type behaviors weren't fully reset, and this created tons of unexpected problems in the game. The easiest way to see if you have this bug is to find a food vendor who belongs to the civilian male type. If they go berserk and start attacking whoever they see, then congratulations, you or somebody else had messed around with this cheat and saved the game in the past because it should not be like this. If you don't know where to find food vendors, then try visiting the Cobra Marital Arts Gym in San Fierro. If you see that the sensei goes nuts and starts to attack his students, after which they clearly make him pay for that, then that is not okay either. The funny thing is how, thanks to this bug, no one here even pretends to fight anymore. Instead, everyone just fights to the death. Crazy, huh? The same thing happens with the Below the Belt gym in Las Venturas, but this time Carl is the punching bag in the master's eyes here, so good luck convincing him that you're not a threat. If the player wants to learn some new moves, then they should mostly rely on luck because sometimes they will have a few seconds to step on a red marker and trigger the next sequence. But you want to know something funny about this? The Ganton Gym isn't affected by this bug at all. There's nothing abnormal going on here. As you can see, some actors go berserk while others don't, and that is why this bug is so nasty. The second affected ped type, civilian female peds, will drive you nuts too. And this mostly affects meeting new girlfriends all over the state to start a relationship. The most dangerous girl of them all is Helena because she is armed with a gun. Normally she shoots the wall, but thanks to this bug she'll just start shooting at every single person who's passing by, and sadly, Carl is not an exception. Katie is less dangerous, but if you find her as she's practicing Tai Chi in the park and approach her, she will immediately start punching you, so stay away from her too. On the other hand, Michelle won't care about you at all. Instead, she'll attack a person who was seconds ago just talking to her. Not a good time to start a relationship, I guess. Barbara sadly has the same temptation issues, and all you have to do is observe the fight. Do you think that as soon as she's done fighting with her opponent that she'll finally start talking to you? <laughs> oh no, she is going to unholster her gun and start shooting at you. Didn't expect that? Well, get used to it. So because of all of this, you might think that it's impossible to start relationships with this bug, but once again, it mostly depends on your luck. If you act fast, then sometimes the game will allow you to get all the girls' numbers, but do not forget to meet them when you have a full health bar. I would also recommend wearing body armor. On the other hand, the dealer-type peds act a little bit differently with this bug because they're not aggressive at all while they're doing their, you know, everyday business in the streets. However, sometimes something can go wrong and their customer suddenly changes their mind and attacks them for no apparent reason, to which they respond with their fists or with their gun. After they eliminate their threat, they'll continue selling their garbage as if nothing happened until they face another angry customer. To be honest, I think the problem lies in the buyer's behavior, and they usually belong to the civilian ped type. Paramedics and firemen ped types act normal, and it seems that this bug doesn't affect them at all, but who knows. 
The last pet type by the name of Bum is an unused type, and its corrupted behavior makes absolutely no difference to gameplay. So up until now, we were mainly talking about what happens in Free Roam. If the player hasn't completed the game yet, then thanks to this broken cheat, they not only have no chance of completing it, but they also won't be able to fully enjoy its story. And here's why. The first mission where the player will definitely get burnt is the mission Burning Desire. Because at the end, Denise refuses to go home and end the mission. Instead, she'll just go and start fighting with random strangers. Thanks to this, the mission sequence breaks and you'll be stuck in an endless cutscene. Of course, the player can always try to activate the less traffic on the streets, cheat and pray for a miracle. But as you can see, it didn't help me much. She just ran away again. And how about this? At the end of the mission Tanker Commander, Catalina goes insane and ends up killing poor Mr. Whitaker in a cutscene. Remember, he was going to pay us for the stolen gasoline. Of course, the game didn't expect this to happen, and it bugs out. And yet again, the unlucky player sees nothing more than just an endless cutscene. And here's my favorite. Do you remember that mission Mad Dog, where a once successful rapper in San Andreas threatened to jump off a roof? Well, guess what? Thanks to this stupid bug, he won't wait for you to find the way to save him, instead he's just gonna jump right away. The mission didn't even start, and already it failed. Because apparently, you let him die. Just imagine the look on a player's face when they experience this glitch for the first time. Thanks to this bug, other missions also become much more difficult and crazy. One of the worst things that can happen to you during a mission is when your partner goes nuts and tries to kill everybody in their way. Sadly, it's impossible to make them stop doing that. You're basically left with having to deal with this mess. And here's some good advice for you. Just stay away from your partner because they can change their mind and put some bullets into you too. This is something you would typically not expect from them at all. In other missions, you'll be attacked by people who don't even know about your existence in the lore. For instance, in the mission 555 We Tip, it'll be a DA who suddenly becomes slightly aggressive after he parks his car. What's even funnier is that sometimes you'll see massive fights breaking out during cutscenes. Is it just me or do these peds not understand the seriousness of this current situation? And trust me, there are a lot of other goofy moments that happen thanks to this behavior corruption. So tell me something. How can you possibly get into this game if all you're seeing constantly is this nonsense on your screen? I bet the player witnessing this will ask themselves if everything is okay with their game. Do these cops really need to fight each other in this cutscene? If anyone had any doubt that something was wrong with their game, those doubts will definitely go away as soon as they see that the car is going to drive away without a driver. Crazy stuff, huh? Of course, this is pretty funny, but what if the player doesn't even understand that their game is broken? Just look at how this bug ruined the key mission photo opportunity. It turns it into an absolute joke. First, we have to chase Caesar down the road and make him get into his own car to drive to the appointment. Then, as soon as we arrive at the destination, Caesar will go berserk and start fighting with every single pedestrian around the block, which of course is going to attract a lot of unwanted attention. But do you think that his behavior is going to fail the mission? Of course not. Our enemies are too blind to notice that their enemy is doing crazy stuff right in front of them. But anyway, just ignore this nonsense and continue taking pictures of these guys. Oh, wait a minute, what are they even doing over there? I see that T-Bone and Mike are having a fight to the death, I guess. Sometimes, T-Bone will fight with the Ballas member that took Ryder to the meeting. Now, if this happens, Torino just runs away from the meeting, so you better take his picture quick before he runs out of our view. And that is how this bug corrupts this and some other missions in this game. So tell me, what would the player understand from this broken mission? Post your ideas in the comments section below. As you can see, this is a very dirty bug that you can trigger, and I doubt you will enjoy this kind of broken mess. Remember to read all the warnings, and don't save your game with this cheat activated. Without any doubt, there is a lot of stuff to do in San Andreas. Here, we can eat as much as we want in restaurants and gain some extra weight, and then eventually lose it by doing some exercises in the gym. We can even build some muscle while we're there too. Sadly for us, there is one problematic bug sitting in the gym minigames. Normally, if you want to build muscle or lose weight, you can go to the gym and do whatever exercise you want until you hit a daily limit. And we can do this every single day until we're satisfied with our results. Unfortunately, as you know, we can't keep an athletic body forever. Eventually, Carl will start losing it, and one day the player will have to go back to the gym and repeat these exercises again. Now, here's the glitch. As soon as you go back to the gym, some players will end up seeing the warning that they've worked out enough for today. 
Of course, this warning makes no sense because they haven't even been exercising here in a long time. So they wait another day and go back, and what do they see again? The same stupid message, and this repeats day after day. In the meantime, Carl becomes either more and more skinny or more and more fat. And the player at this point is probably losing their patience because they can't do anything about it. But what is causing this problem? Well, not everyone knows this, but the game has its own built-in calendar. Every single New Year, it resets to the 1st of January, and this is where the game stores the date where the player hits their daily limit. But the game doesn't actually show this calendar anymore, it just exists. While that might sound amazing, in reality it doesn't work the way it should because this built-in calendar doesn't count years, only days and months. Thanks to that, it is always the year 1992, and your previous year's store daily limit date breaks the gym into the next year in a very specific way. If, for instance, the player hit their daily limit on the 25th of October last year, then the game will allow you to do exercises only if any number in the current date is greater by one digit from the daily limit. In this case, it can be the 26th of January, or the 29th of March, or any day in November and December. Just think about it. The player doesn't know the current day in the game, nor do they know the date that they'll hit the daily limit. They'll have absolutely no idea what's going on, or when they can even do these stupid exercises again. On the bright side, when the player finally finds the day that they can work out again, they must, I repeat, must hit the new daily limit in the current year. After that, the game goes back to normal, but unfortunately, the problem repeats itself starting from the 1st of January the next year. And it always was a huge problem for people, because the muscles in this game are sometimes vital to progress further. For instance, some girlfriends want us to be muscular, because otherwise they won't be interested in talking to us. And the treadmill or stationary bike helps us to burn fat faster as well as to maximize stamina, which is crucial in some parts of this game too. Of course, you can always cheat and become an athlete in one second, but what if the player wants to do it the right way? Then that is going to be a problem. I know that this sounds stupid, but if you don't want to suffer through this problem, then just don't hit the daily limit in any version you play. That's the easiest way to avoid this bug completely. I think a lot of you already know about the basketball minigame, which is a unique minigame for GTA. Of course, this activity isn't anything extraordinary, but I bet a lot of you tried to get the ball through the hoop at least once. Going by the game's lore, this activity is unlocked right after the player completes the first mission for Sweet, tagging up the turf. After that, it becomes available for the rest of the game unless you're on a mission. But a lot of people reported that after some time passed, they couldn't find any basketballs in the game. They claimed that they just disappeared from all the courts around the state. Thanks to this, a lot of people eventually forgot the existence of basketball in this game. If you had the same issue, then congratulations! You triggered the most famous bug in the entire game. Do you know how you did it? Well, if you encountered this glitch, that means you just saved your progress at Mad Dog's Crib, as a lot of other people did after unlocking this place. As soon as you save your game here, your save file becomes, let's say, broken. And the next time you load your save in this crib, all basketballs will vanish from the game forever. Do you know why this happens? Well, it's because there's a private basketball court that's very close to the save pickup. Every single basketball court has a special script around it, let's call it an activation zone. If you enter this zone, it enables the basketball minigame and spawns the ball. The problem is, the save pickup here is located inside of this activation zone, and as soon as you save your game here, you are also saving a command that you activated the basketball minigame. That is why when you load this save game, the game thinks that the basketball minigame has already been activated and that the ball has already spawned. And unfortunately, there is no way to reset this command after that. But if you want to avoid this bug, it is highly recommended that you save your progress at the Mulholland safe house, and of course, it is recommended to stay away from Mad Dog's crib. Yes, this place costs money, but if you don't want to lose basketball, then there's no other way you can do it unless you don't care about it not being in your game. Funny thing is, you can break the pool minigame in the same way too. By saving and loading your game near a pool table, the game will refuse to load your opponent. But there's one important thing about this. In the normal game, there are no save pickups near pool tables, meaning you can break this minigame only by using mods. However, if you play the mobile version, then get ready to experience this bug very quickly. Thanks to all these random checkpoints and quick saves around every corner, the minigames do not last too long in this platform. Let's be honest, we've all done something stupid in this game. Maybe you tried to store as many vehicles as you could in a garage, or maybe you stole a plane and tried to fly it out of the map boundaries. 
If you did anything similar to that in the past, then you'll know that there are no boundaries in this game. You're just gonna fly forever towards an endless ocean without even realizing that you're breaking your game. Even if you didn't do this out of stupidity, then you must have done it unintentionally. Maybe while you were playing the mission St. Mark's Bistro when you were flying to Liberty City. Or during the mission Freefall where you have to intercept the enemy's plane with this flying bucket of nuts by the name of the Dodo. The game breaks because there's a bug sitting in the unfogging map function. Normally, if this function sees that the player has entered an unexplored area, it will change a specific data array in this zone from two zeros to zero one. After that, this territory becomes unfogged and marked as explored. And everything would be fine if only the developers made bound checks in this function. If the player flies towards the ocean for too long, then the unfogging algorithm will go out of control. It will begin rewriting memory in other arrays, ones that are responsible for various things in zones. And let's start with the PlayStation 2 version, where it works like this. First of all, gangs will get new territories all over the map. For instance, it can be the Vagos controlling Bayside, or the Ballas lurking around San Fierro. According to the lore, it is impossible for them to be anywhere beyond Los Santos. But perhaps an ordinary player won't pay attention to that, and maybe they'll even try to take over these territories. That won't be hard to do because thanks to this bug, these gangs' densities are equal to one, meaning there will only be one weak wave that you'll have to fight in order to win this territory. But in reality, it's not only the Ballas and Vagos that can appear outside of their territories. You could also make Mafia members appear around some places too. In the normal game, this gang doesn't even have any territory, so it will definitely amaze the player if they know this detail and come across it. Actually, you can fill one territory with all nine possible gangs, and most of the time they'll rule simultaneously, but very rarely will they be seen on the streets because their densities are still equal to one. And don't forget that if a territory has a gang, then the game will also activate a special flag in this zone, making gang cars appear more frequently. If you have lots of glitched territories around the map, then it will be frustrating to see tons of repeating cars on the road. You're suddenly going to be seeing a lot more Greenwoods, Voodoos, Tahomas, and others. Secondly, some territories will be filled with dealers too, who without any hesitation will try to sell their goods somewhere where they don't even belong according to the lore. Funny thing is, most of the time it will be a rare biker dealer with unique quotes, who appears very shortly in the beginning of the game for a few minutes. But as I understand, this NPC mostly corresponds to San Fierro. Thirdly, you can also screw territory's pop cycle, and thanks to that you'll start to see pedestrians and vehicles from other zones. As you can see, I've managed to get the desert pop cycle in some areas in San Fierro, but it does look a little bit awkward. Fourthly, the player can corrupt the so-called zone's terminator, and because of this, the zone will be missing its name. On the PS2, it's a harmless bug because, let's be honest, only a few people will notice that some territories suddenly don't have names anymore. Now until this moment, I've shown you only the most obvious and most explored consequences of them all. Of course, there are a few more glitches involving zone corruption, but to be honest, they're not so well explored and sometimes it's hard to even tell what rewritten arrays actually did to a territory. But right now, you should understand one thing. The longer you fly towards the ocean, the more territories will become corrupted, and this is how your map might look after some time. But every single person who does this will definitely get a different result, because the bug heavily depends on the direction that you're flying in, and today we can even predict the results. Two magnificent people, Orion SR and Nick 007 j did some calculations and made this so-called territory glitch map for the PS2 version. Thanks to this, we now know what we can corrupt if we fly somewhere specific. This area, for the most part, is responsible for the ped population in the zones. This area is where you'll corrupt their terminators, and this is where you'll just unfog the main map. And that is how this bug works in the PS2 version of the game. Sometimes I've heard that people will trigger this glitch on purpose to make more gang territories around the map without even knowing that there are more consequences to it than that. On the other hand, those who didn't know about this bug at all were quite unhappy to see some territories glitched out. But no matter how you feel about this bug, you would definitely want to avoid triggering it on PC because it works a little bit differently on this platform. If you take a look at the PC map of this glitch, then you'll see that its algorithms are mostly corrupting the zone terminators rather than changing the zone population. And thanks to this, the results are more devastating than on the PS2. On the PC version, there are a lot of places where the player can break the base map's terminator. If they do this, then they'll completely lose the ability to play the taxi side mission. They'll just be cruising around the city seeing no fares to take. 
This isn't surprising because the mission can't locate the base map, meaning that it can't see any pedestrians. This is why the script doesn't make any clients. Without any doubt, it's quite a frustrating thing to experience, especially if you're trying to complete the game to 100%. The risk of triggering this glitch is pretty high and I'll explain why later. Also, on the PC version, the player can easily break the mission Mike Torino, where someone kidnaps Mike and your goal is to find him while talking to him on a cell phone with low battery. If the player corrupts the Doherty Zone's Terminator, and there are some sectors where you can do it, then after you arrive at the checkpoint, nothing will happen. The next sequence won't start because the mission doesn't understand if Carl entered this zone or not. In the meantime, the poor player will try to find some stupid checkpoint at the construction site, and that would be a waste of time. Fortunately for them, there is a second Doherty zone near the airport. If the player accidentally enters this zone, then they'll finally trigger the next part of this mission unless that is broken too. The same problem happens with the next sequence where the player drives to Easter Basin, testing their luck in the main zone with the marker and then with the second one a little bit further north. Interestingly enough, if the player knows that Mike is held at the San Fierro airport, then they can simply ignore the scouting part and drive directly to the main airport gates. By doing that, they will trigger the last part of the mission and skip the bug with territories. But if the player doesn't know about this trick, then the mission becomes a nightmare. But anyway, let's return to the map. If you fly south, then the player will get the same results that change ped population like on the PS2. But due to the difference in the algorithm, instead of 173 territories, in the PC version you can only manipulate 12, and for the most part they aren't very interesting. This list includes the Starfish Casinos area, a small area in Whitewood Estates, the Clown's Pocket Casino territory, two small territories around the San Fierro Golf Club, and some areas in Los Santos. If someone tells you that it's possible to change the ped population in all territories on PC, then don't trust them. It was either done by a map editor or through some other bugs. Either way, it's highly recommended to avoid this bug on PC because it does more harm than good. But on the PS2, you could experiment with it as much as you want. At least it doesn't break any missions in the game. But if you want to completely avoid this bug, then unfortunately, it's just not possible. Because as I said earlier, we can trigger it simply by playing St. Mark's Bistro, where we have to fly to this place far away from the map. If the player flies just a little too far north to Liberty City, then they can easily end up flying through the base map Terminator, which will break taxi missions. And that makes for a real bummer. On the other hand, if they fly straight to the marker, then they can end up breaking something irrelevant that won't make any difference. On the PS2, the player will either add more gangs to Bayside, or to Battery Point, or to the Pirates and Men's Pants area, and sadly, this is inevitable. Funny enough, most people ended up glitching the Bayside territory, and this is why most saves from the internet have Vagos territory there. In the mission Freefall, you're flying too far away from the map too, but it's completely safe to do it. As I previously showed you, all these sectors in the north just unfog territories around the main map, doing no harm in the process. If we take a look at the original Xbox version, then this bug might work differently there too, but we don't know it for sure. You see, the Xbox version is quite unpopular, and it was pretty much the least explored version. But as far as I can see, this bug works very close to how it does in the PC version, having only a few zones to populate, and with it being very easy to break the taxi missions. But either way, thankfully you can experience this pesky bug only in the first versions on those platforms that I mentioned. And yes, I am talking about the so-called hot coffee versions. As you can see, the developers eventually discovered this bug and fixed it, but I wonder why they didn't fix the rest of the bugs I showed you. Do you know what would be the most disappointing thing that could happen on the long journey to 100% completion? When the game suddenly glitches out and prohibits the player from getting that highly anticipated three-digit number in the stats menu. Would you believe it if I told you that this bug can be triggered by this completely ordinary blackboard from the import-export side mission? This is where the player sees the list of vehicles that they can steal and take to the barge via the crane. As you know, this isn't difficult to do at all, it just takes a lot of time to find these vehicles and that's why a lot of players do this gradually. But one day they might end up with an unpleasant surprise. As soon as they enter the docks area, the game for some reason will always crash now, prohibiting the player from delivering new stolen cars and earning 100%, and there is no way to bypass this crash from happening. What could possibly be going wrong? Well, the answer is quite simple. This bug depends on a complete coincidence and bad luck. 
You see, every single prop which is spawned by the script gets a special so-called handle, and there are a lot of handles in this game. At the same time, there are these red traffic cones in the driving and bike schools, which by pure accident can end up having the same handle as the blackboard of the San Fierro docks. In general, this situation might happen with any handle in the game, but the problem is the code that unloads the traffic cones in the school is not perfect. As soon as the lesson ends, the code, if the handles are the same, will delete both the traffic cones in the polygon and the blackboard at the docks. Due to the fact that the import-export scripts now can't locate the board, the game crashes when you go anywhere near this zone. Thankfully, the probability that the handles will be the same is very, very low, but unfortunately it still exists. And because such a probability even exists, it is highly recommended for the player to finish the driving and bike schools first, and only then should you try to complete the import-export side mission. If the player hasn't finished these schools yet and they're still doing import-export, then it's also recommended that you just find all the vehicles first and only then afterwards should you go and finish the schools. I hope you get the idea. Now you might be asking, is there a way to fix your save and get rid of these pesky bugs that I mentioned? Well, yes and no. The easiest way you can do this right now is to use this magnificent website where you can upload your broken save game, modify it by using the modifications tab, and when you're done just select the slot of your choice and you'll download your newly fixed save. However, this service does not offer to fix the blackboard bug right now. And sadly, it doesn't support all versions of GTA San Andreas. But who knows, maybe more versions will be added soon. Oh, and don't forget that it's not very easy to get your save game on some platforms, especially a PS2 save from a memory card. In this regard, the luckiest players are PC players, because we have such a thing as Silent Patch. Sadly, though, it doesn't fix everything. The broken cheat that we were discussing at the beginning is not fixed, because as Silent said to me, it is not an easy thing to do. On the other hand, you don't need to worry about flying towards the ocean anymore. This bug with the zone corruption was fully fixed in this patch. There's also no need to worry about the broken gym limit anymore either. The game does calculations a little bit different now, and it takes the days from the day's pass counter from the stats menu. In order to fully fix the basketball and pool glitches, the code for these minigames should be slightly rewritten, and this is why Silent Patch and many other patches just move this save pickup slightly further inside the crib. Thanks to this, new players won't trigger the basketball bug by saving their game in this place anymore. Funny thing is, Silent didn't know about the blackboard glitch, and this is why it wasn't fixed in this patch. Fortunately, it is possible to fix your save by injecting the stupid board back into the game and then by saving your game. This can be achieved with a custom script such as Clio on PC and mobile. But these are not all of the fatal bugs that I wanted to show you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see the second part, then feel free to let me know by leaving a comment about it. For more videos on GTA, Rockstar Games, and other stuff, then check out my channel here on YouTube at Badger Goodger. And don't forget to follow Vadim and me on Twitter. For Vadim M, this has been Badger, and I hope you have a great day out there, everyone.